Hello, good evening, family. How are we doing today? Hi, How are we doing today? We are excited. Come on in. We got a quick message for you, right? We always say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, gonna, you say that. I, I say that. Well, I, well, well. I'm gonna try to keep my word tonight. That is going to be a quicker message than usual. But um, well, now you're taking up the time. But it's an important <laughs> message. So I'm gonna talk to you while you come in. Uh, share this live oh also. All right. Um, it's important that we speak tonight, tonight, because um, we're all family here and um, we're all leading and we're all responsible and has a sphere of influence. And it's important for us to understand how tremendous our presence and our influence is in other people's lives because we work and deal with people every day, whether it be, um, you know, your children whether it be your spouse, whether it be those that you lead at work, whether it be those that look to you for a smile from your community, your neighbors, uh, those that you meet at your children's school, wherever you are, you got influence. So that means that you're a leader. And so tonight we just wanna hunker down and talk real quick about how we are given an opportunity right now to be a good leader and to, um, to influence people positively and give them hope while we live our lives. So tonight, that's what we want to talk to you about. Cheryl, anything you want to say? How are you we guys? Up? We just love you guys and we pray yeah, that yeah. you're all so safe. Uh, we're continually praying and cover each and every one of you. We thank you that you are using wisdom and prudence um, in your going about and that you're honoring all the instructions that's given to us by our um, CDC and um, those in our community. And now um, we go around demonstrating love in all the ways that we possibly mm -hmm. can. So we love you guys. We believe that you guys are going to be protected and covered, um, especially if you listen to what we're talking about. We're gonna. We hope our hope is that we use this time to really demonstrate God's love and really strengthen ourselves, get strengthened in our in who we are as individual and sharing our light with so many others. And um, we're just glad and thankful for you guys all uh, being with us tonight. Um, so we encourage you to please okay, go ahead and um, share it with anyone who can value from this encouragement. Absolutely, absolutely. So tonight, I just want to give you a quick a rundown of what we're going to do tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk about being prudent. Tonight, we're going to talk about managing the spirit of fear. Tonight, we're going to talk about praying and seeking God's face and then walking uprightly with God because this whole package I'm going to talk to you about is a package of protection. It's a package of, mm -hmm. of hope and it's a package of leadership mm -hmm. to anyone that is in your care or in your influence. And so it's really important for us to what understand does it mean to what be that influence. What does that mean? Well, well, I'm going to talk to you about leadership tonight a little bit, right? And leadership is influence. And influence is you having the ability to have someone's ear and heart so that you could give a, or impart to them, right? So you're affecting their life because they value what you've got to say and they value how you live, right? All of us as human beings have a sphere of influence or a group of people that believe in us and the way we comport ourselves and the way we live our lives. So yeah. we are in essence um, a source of, of comfort. Mm -hmm. We are a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. um, we are someone that has the ability to impact and empower that person's life. Mm -hmm. And they have mm -hmm. given that to you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something that they entrust you with. So. Mm -hmm. Leadership is simple. Leadership is influence, right? Some of us work for a company and um, we go there and we do what we got to do because of a check. That's really not really leadership. That's just, you know, we obey, right? Because there's a reason for us to be there, mm -hmm. that check, right? But that's not necessarily leadership. But there are people in your life, guys, no matter who you are and where you live, um, there are people in your life that trust you and they value how you do things and what you've got to say, mm -hmm. which means that you have influence with them. Mm -hmm. And so you're a leader. Mm -hmm. And so as a leader, we have to realize that with, <laughs> with the opportunity to lead comes a level of responsibility mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. to lead well, mm -hmm. because what comes out of our mouth and how we impact those people is going to affect how they live their lives daily. Mm -hmm. Especially now when it comes to like your children, uh, when it comes to your spouse, men, when it comes to your leadership 
to your wife and to your children and your entire family and if you're involved in your community it's very very important that we value our leadership right mm -hmm. even in our jobs mm -hmm. um, if you are working in any activities with your children whether it be sports or um, any kind of sports mm -hmm. um, band parent and so on you are have a you have a sphere of influence you're a teacher you know um, you're a, a caregiver in any form you have influence I believe that wherever you're put and there's a neighbor someone next to you that's standing next to you and they trust you yeah. and um, they believe in you or they're always asking you question you have influence absolutely absolutely and so it's huge that we are a different as a leader right you want to be different your voice needs to be different so what do I mean by that in the context of a parent you got a child two children three four children in your household your voice as a parent should sound a lot different than the voice of the media and the voice of the masses mm -hmm. Meaning when there is great hysteria and people are running down to the store during this whole uh, coronavirus thing and they're buying out all the paper towel and the toilet paper and people are getting scared. Mm -hmm. Your voice as a leader to your children and to our family members that are looking to us for leadership and guidance and some level of comfort mm -hmm. should sound different than the media. It shouldn't be the same hysteria mm -hmm. because what we're doing now, if we now start to to bring the same voice that they're hearing on the news and in, in, in society or in community mm -hmm. is that we are now perpetuating fear mm -hmm. and we're perpetuating a compromise to people's, uh, our family's uh, mindset um, to, 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 to their sanity, so yeah. to speak. You don't want to put people... Emotional health, you know, because it brings on anxiety, stress, worry. And those type of thing and even maybe depression absolutely and so during this time that is a serious time mm -hmm. right so we're not gonna minimize the time we're not gonna minimize the fact that what's happening with the COVID-19 is not a big deal or it's not important it's to be ignored no we're not gonna minimize it but we're not gonna blow it out of proportion either we're not going to blow it out of proportion and say that there is no hope right mm -hmm. and so Leader, a leader's voice should be a lot different from what the masses are doing. Also, one thing we got to recognize is that in every crisis, we are now given an opportunity yes. to lead well and to lead differently. You now have an opportunity to be a voice of reason. You have an opportunity to be a beacon of hope. You have an opportunity to be a place of comfort. And so your voice got to sound different than the media. Your voice got to sound a lot different than what's happening out there in society. Once again, I'm harping on it, especially if you're a spouse to mm -hmm. someone and you are a parent to your children. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are people in your community that look to you for leadership and for comfort. So your voice, you want to have your voice sounding a lot different. So we're going to talk about how to do that tonight. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the things I want to say to you tonight, if you're a person of God and a person of faith, we need to be okay with being in charge, but not being in control, True. right? Being in charge, meaning that you have a plan, you're being prudent, you know the word of God, and you know how to comport yourself so that you're not uh, running around with, with mass hysteria over your life. But also while you're being in charge, you're okay with not being in control because this whole thing that's happening right now with COVID-19 is a fluid thing. We don't know what's happening next week. We don't know what's happening next month or tomorrow, or tomorrow but we are not at a loss for hope and we're not out of, uh, we're not, uh, out of being in charge of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, everything's not up in the air right, right? at the we same have, we, we have control of our behavior our uh, decisions our minds our thoughts absolutely and then of course you know God is in is the one that is in control and the way we let God be in control because I like to be a, even a little more specific because we hear a lot of things when uh, we talk to people that are you know religious mm -hmm. we hear a lot of things like oh God is in control how do you allow God to be in control the, the way I allow God to be in control is number one, I learn the Word of God. I try to get as much of what God said and how He said to live in my life. Mm -hmm. And once I know what He said, what, how I let Him to be in control is I obey what He said. Mm -hmm. That's how I allow God to be in control. God being in control don't mean that I simply live a reckless life and say God's got me. 
That's not God being in control. That's not even being prudent. That's being reckless. God being in control for me as a believer means that I know what God says about how to handle myself in a time of crisis. And then now I obey God's word concerning how do I comport myself according to God's word during a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. Once I know I'm doing what God says to do during difficult times, then guess what? I'm allowing God to be in control. And so I want to talk to you about a few things tonight um, that God wants us to do in these difficult times as families. Mm -hmm. um, because guess what? The news is going to tell us what they're going to tell us. Mm -hmm. But the news was not the one and the government was not the one that created mankind. Right. Uh, the government was not the one that you know created this big ball of mud that we live on. The government is not the one that hung the moon and the stars. And the government's not the one that is in control of anything. Mm -hmm. And so as much as I will abide by the law of the land, because that is one of the things that God commands us to do, mm -hmm. right? I will make sure that I abide by the law of the kingdom of God because ultimately he created it all. Mm -hmm. And he told us a long time ago in his word about all these things that are currently happening, happening that yeah. they will happen. He yeah. talked about plagues. And he talked about pestilence. And we're dealing with a plague and a pestilence right now. So I want to talk to you guys tonight about how not to live in fear, but how to live out in leadership. How to, how to, how to, how to comport yourself as a leader and give comfort to others just by the way you behave every day. Just by the way you walk out of here with a smile when you go to work. Just by the way you come home with hope and a smile and your family know that all is well because you're still uh, in a place of comfort mm -hmm. and you're still in charge and of course they see that God is in control and mm -hmm. you're good with that. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Absolutely. Anything you want to add no, before I jump in? Good. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about tonight is that we ought to be prudent, yeah. right? We need to be prudent, all right? As much as I'm talking to you about the Word of God tonight, I'm going to talk to you about being prudent because the Word of God talks to us about being prudent. And so let's look at Matthew 4, verse 6 through 7. I'm going to talk scripture tonight, straight scripture, because I don't want to tell you what Joel think or what Sherilyn think. Right. I'm going to show you how God says in His Word to comport ourselves and be prudent in times when we're being tested. Yeah, we believe that the, the Bible is a constitu constitution for our life, it's a manual for our lives, mm -hmm. and, and we've lived our lives to this point. With any success that we have is because of our obedience to scripture slash law, instructions, um, uh, um, protocols. protocols for us to, to walk by. Absolutely. And so here's what Jesus, what happened to Jesus in Matthew 4, um, verse 6 and 7, I'm going to deal with. By the way, just to give you a little background, this is when Jesus was being tempted by the after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was taken up into the wilderness by Satan to be tempted, right? And so at this point in verse 6, it says, And Satan uh, saith unto him, him Jesus, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, now here's Satan quoting the Bible, It is written, He, God, shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest, uh, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now, so Satan's telling Jesus at the foot, at the head, at the edge of this cliff, throw yourself over, because God did say in the Bible, in Psalm that, 91 specifically, <laughs> uh -huh, that He will give His angels charge over you. So if God is a God that you said He is, you could throw yourself over this cliff, right? Be reckless, and God will save you. And here's what Jesus said in response to Satan tempting him to, be, to not be prudent. Jesus said to Satan in verse 7, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So we're, we're in the same situation right now where, you know, there is some, 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 some uh, uh, a pestilence going on right now. Right. They're, they're calling it a pandemic, mm -hmm. right? And some of us that are faithful, that are, that are believers, we're saying stuff like, God got me. I'm covered. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we, be we begin a a being reckless. 
we're not being prudent. So we still, we're still out there doing whatever. We ain't washing our hands. We're not doing none of that stuff that we're hearing that we should do to be prudent. That's not wisdom. Right. And I want to bring to the, the point to, to this. You remember mm -hmm. in this, in the same scripture, scripture, Matthew 4, 6 and 7, both Jesus, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. uh, representing good, and Satan, the devil, are both quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. They're quoting the word of God. You see, hey, nothing Natalie. happens in the world. Hi, hey, Natalie. Nothing happens in the world un unless we on earth confess. Or, or make it happen or come to fruition. But it's according to the word of God. Whatever happens, the word of God, both of them using the word of God. And as believers, we should get a, take a note that we should be using the word of God and also knowing the word of God. Absolutely. And so being prudent um, is something that God is big on, right? And, the, and Sherilyn mentioned earlier that the word of God for us is the constitution. Just like there are laws of the land that we need to live by so that we don't get in trouble with the legal system in the United States of America, the yeah. kingdom of God has laws of the laws, spiritual yeah. laws so that we don't get ourselves wide open to traps and things that can trip us up and cause our own demise. And so it's not religious at all. It's literally um, what the law of the land has duplicated for this country to operate or any country in the world to operate. God had that system from the time he created mankind for us to live by. Before the foundations of the earth, ab ab Absolutely. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 1. Absolutely. And so being prudent is a big deal. So we're not by any means saying that you, you should uh, disobey what the CDC is saying and disregard what the government's saying and that you should go in a crowded places and still uh, business as usual. That's not what we're saying. We're saying be prudent. But then after you're prudent, there's, there's more to your, to your living and there is more to your well-being um, that you need to be uh, mindful of. And so the next thing that I wanted us to talk to you about is to manage the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. The Bible mentions uh, fear not, or, or somewhere in the Bible, 365 times, there's the quote, fear not, somewhere in the Bible. When God sends out his servants to conquer a land, when, uh, when, when kings had to go do what God was trying to instruct them to do, he always told them to fear not. And, and the reason why he mentions the, uh, to them not to have fear when they're going to do anything uh, major is because fear will always compromise your mission. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons for uh, a lot of us uh, falling into things like depression and even compromising our own immunity system is fear. When we become fearful and then we allow stress into our life, stress can actually compromise your physical body and cause your own demise. And so um, there's a lot of evidence now, scientific evidence, to prove that stress, anxiety, and all of these things that are caused by fear can compromise your physical body to the point where you can go to the doctor, they can see that your body and your immune system is compromised, but they can't tell why it is. And that's because it's stress-related. Mm -hmm. And stress is brought on by fear. And the Bible tells us about the spirit of fear over 365 times. And so manage the spirit of fear. Let me read 2 Timothy 1 and 7 to you because this was written thousands and thousands of years ago. Nothing new. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so God is saying here, when you have the spirit of fear overcome you, what you don't have is power, and what you don't have is love, and what you don't have is a sound mind. And so the opposite of, 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 of a sound mind and love is fear, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the major things you got to make sure that you do in difficult times or in trying times like these is manage the spirit of fear. Get rid of the spirit of fear out of your life. You right. want to chime in on that? 
Um, one of the things that could lead to spirit of fear is, of course, what, things that we say. Whatever we say, um, you know, comes from what our thought life. And at this time, during these times, you know, we are human beings. We're going to be tempted because uh, there's so the, the the fact that it's a it's a virus. COVID virus is a virus that could it, it kills. You know, we're hearing all the reports of how dangerous, uh, how powerful this uh, strand of virus is. And so it's it's. It's normal, you know, it's human for us to, to be concerned, you know, or think about it, our safety and how quickly these, uh, this virus could actually uh, pass on. So I'm saying all that to say that, you know, we're all of us, we, we are susceptible to things that will cause, that will tempt us in, in a way, in the area you know, fear. in area of fear. Mm -hmm. And so when we're walking through life, you know, what we think, you know, what we have in our heart. Well, you know, our belief system, how we think, and then what we say makes a big, big difference. So this is one of the things we're talking about. That's why we want to shower ourselves and, and be not be conformed to the world, Romans tells us. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Mm -hmm. So at these times, whatever we have in our hearts or our mind is what's going to come out. So if we have a lot of negative inside of us, most likely that's going to come out. If we have a lot of good things inside of us based on association, things that we look at, things that we read the type of people we associate with then these are the things that are going to come out of our mouth Absolutely. so at these times um when there's um situations like this it's a test it's like a a, pr a a pressure on the on the cold so to say to see you know if we are diamonds yet or will we shine or will we remain cold scripture tells us right guard your heart because yeah. out of it flows the issues, issues of, of life right if you if you if you expose your heart to too much of the news and too much of the chaos and the, and the gossip from the neighbors and the fear mm -hmm. that everyone else is putting mm -hmm. out there and you're not actually protecting your heart or your spirit, then out of that spirit or out of your heart will flow the issues of your life. And so what you see manifesting in your life, whether it be fear or negative speaking, is clearly a reflection of what your heart has okay. allowed and then people going into the store and and buying up everything and not thinking about others is basically out of themselves you know if you're a selfless individual you won't be concerned that you know what there's going to be elderly people that are going to be in need there's going to be other families that's going to be in need mm -hmm. the government is well aware and also these companies are well aware of the need that the that the demand that is going to come upon us so if we take enough like that we need for the, the same amount of time that we uh, usually take take for maybe two weeks or so on. But within two weeks, we're trusting that, you know, there's going to be more toilet paper on the <laughs> shelf by then. But just going out there and confiscating, not thinking about anyone else, you know, it, it, it tells us, tells what 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 has been poured into our heart. And it's a, uh, the pressure that's been put on the coal, and now we are um, exposing who we are. Now, I mentioned this um, because we're talking about leadership um, during this time, and that you, each and every one of you, are leaders. You have influence over a sphere of people around you and mm -hmm. how you comport yourself is what's going to make the difference and how all of us be able to go through this. Whether we go through it, it in fear and, and, and in stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, or we just go through it hopefully encouraging one another and, and getting a positive outcome. Um, we want to we wanna watch what we say. Because the, um, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, a 20, it says, Death and life are in the, in the power of the tongue, mm -hmm. and those who love it eat of its fruit. So if you're speaking negative, you're speaking fear, you know, that's why we said again, you have to program your heart because out of your heart will flow, um, out of your mouth will flow the issues of your heart mm -hmm. and your mind. So we want to make sure that we're speaking those things that are good. If, let's say, okay, yeah, we did fill ourselves up with a lot of negative. Now, this is the time where we consume ourselves with things that are uplifting, are Absolutely. encouraging. We associate ourselves with positive mind people, and we watch what we say, because here is why I'm telling you. Because the Bible also is saying, Galatians 6, 7, and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that he will also reap. 
For he who sows to the flesh will reap of the, the flesh corruption. Flesh just means things that are sinful, things that are, are not of righteous and uprightly, upright. So if you're speaking negative and you're making fun of a lot of stuff that you know shouldn't is not really funny, and you're being totally negative at this time that oh my gosh, we're all gonna die and all this kind of stuff, you know, and you don't know what tomorrow's gonna the whole, guess what? You're gonna reap those things in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, like Joel said, when you stress and when you worry and you're and you're overwhelmed, it actually weighs down on your immune system. And what is one of the main thing they're telling us to be be mindful of? We want to make sure that we have a strong immune system because having a strong immune system is great for us in mm -hmm. case you know in case anything. We don't know what the future holds, so we want to be prudent. It says, "But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life." And we're talking to you guys to feed your spirit. Your spirit, man, right now is the perfect time mm -hmm. for us to go buckle down and, 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 and read the word of God. Put positive, put good stuff inside of you and build your spirit, man, up. A lot of us are going to be off for work and um, based on the job that you're doing. And God bless all you guys that want the front, front lines. When you're home, you know, take pick up a good book. A read book. What you're looking at television, don't overdose yourself on news because mm -hmm. garbage in, garbage out. You want to make sure you overwhelm yourself with something that you desire to do and fill yourself in, up with when you were at work and you wish you could have read that book or you could have read the Bible or more you or, or, or you could have listened to a program or write those or, articles or exactly, blog or whatever it is you exactly, wanted to do. Exactly. Anything that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. This is like the perfect time. So you want to have a different perspective on what you're doing and don't get involved in what the masses are doing because you know we these again the times like these really really show us what who we are you know a, a lot of times people look at the bible you know when they read the bible and they say oh you know if i grew up in the times of jesus i wouldn't have been one of those yelling crucify him now would we you know look this is a time of where's pestilence and a time of trial how are we comporting ourselves how are we behaving are we choosing to believe humble ourselves and believe truth and and be a, a source of encouragement and have hope or are we doing the opposite and mm -hmm. again this cannot happen unless it's inside of us and this is a op perfect opportunity for us to put inside what we need to put in so we could bring out life Absolutely. therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all especially to those who are the house of faith so i just want to encourage you guys that you know you want to make sure that you are feeding yourself again good information so that the good information will come surround yourself with life and not death and then speak that bite your tongue try not to talk too much about the negative things that are going on because that's the first thing people will think and another thing i want to say about the negative that go out now if you may not agree with what i'm saying and you go out there and you're still talking negative in the future, after this is all passed, you'll see yourself reaping certain things that you've sowed. You don't, you may not sow exactly what you reap, but you'll reap something negative. It might, it may not affect you, but it might affect your children, and it may affect somebody really close to you. And, and this is how these things, these things work. Well, let's talk about the law of sowing and reaping. When you sow, you reap more than you sow. Oh gosh, yes. When you sow, you mm -hmm. reap after you sow. Right. Depending on the plant that you that you sow, there's a there's a time frame. Every every farmer has a calendar, and for every crop, it has a time frame that if you plant this specific plant today, it it begins to grow by this month, and then it it it, it, it the fruits of that plant will show up maybe five months later. And so so we may think that yeah. being negative and being fearful and speaking fear. Um, has no consequence because when we say it nothing happened that yeah. moment But we have to realize that with the law of sowing and reaping we reap later than we sow right. and we also reap In more abundance. Yeah, because think sow. about it when you sow when you when you sow an apple seed it build, it you, it raises an apple tree and what comes out of an apple tree multiple apples with multiple seed of its kind oh, So you want to make sure whatever you're sowing is exactly what you want to reap Absolutely. And so that's why it's important to curb the spirit of fear because the spirit of fear will have you confessing what is in your heart, which is fear. And then, of course, once you confess it, the Bible says you're going to be snared by the words of your mouth, which means a snare is a trap. 
So you are going to now uh, build a trap and you're in it because of what you have spoken. And of mm -hmm. course, it'll show up later. So manage the spirit of fear, shut it down so that you're able to be in good standing. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk to you about is praying and seeking the face of God. Here's what 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says. It says, if my people, this is God speaking, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins, then I will heal their land. I'm going to slow down real quick. And, and let's talk about all the components of that scripture right there. God says, if my people, those that say they believe in me, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray mm -hmm. and seek my face. And here's what he says. Not just seek my face. Not just show up and say, God, save us from this. He says, also, turn from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. So if you've got things like unforgiveness in your life, if you've been doing things like manipulating people on the job, if you've been participating in things where, you know, you've been, you know, we've been, you know, behaving unrighteously mm -hmm. or dealing with people unfairly. Right. If there's anything that is unjust about the way you've operated, God is saying not just show up and pray to be saved from what's going on. Show up and pray and check your heart, check your heart, turn from those ways. He says, then... I will hear from heaven, right? And I will forgive you of your sins, and then I will heal your land. Well, let's back up, because I want to go into this, this, this part that talks about changing from, from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. um, uh, wicked ways. Now, a lot of people believe that they're righteous within themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they go about, you know, they we thinking, go about. we go about mm -hmm. so we're thinking, all included in well, this. we're all, exactly, because sin is sin. Sin is all around. Like I heard, heard it once said that sin is like gravity. You know, we cannot escape gravity on this earth. You know, sin is gravity. It's given. We were born into sin. You know, in a, from a mother's womb, we were born into mm -hmm. sin. So all of us are sinners. We, you know, we've sinned. Yeah. All of us sin. So you guys got that? Mm -hmm. Sin is like gravity. And um, like in the circus, he likened it to the circus. Now a tightrope. So now you're walking a tightrope. Walking rope. uprightly or righteously is like the tightrope. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. It's walking that tightrope. And below that, thanks to Jesus Christ, There's we grace. have grace, which is the, the, net. the net that catches us. So we are, the, 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 the walking the tightrope or walking righteously is not really easy. It may not be easy. At times we are going to fall. We're going to fall short. And But the good, wonderful thing about Jesus Christ is that when we fall, that tightrope, that, that, that um, net. net is there to catch us. That's the grace so we of God. won't fall. Exactly. The grace of God that we won't fall to our death. So we're not, we're not criticizing and saying that we will not all fall short because we are going to fall short. But here's how we walk righteously, uprightly. Mm -hmm. And in a situation like this, it's something that we could specifically put our attention to and, and, and obey and and see how a seed that God will work for us. Now in Psalm 66, 18, it says, Psalm 66, 18, it says, If I regard in my heart iniquity, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. So if we're there petitioning, yes, God says, do not be anxious for anything, but in prayer and petition, make your request known to me, and I, the Lord of peace, will grant you peace that surpass all natural understanding, and that I will uh, guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Now, his word is true, but if we're not seeing results, if we're still being worried and anxious, then maybe the Holy Spirit is telling us that you are regarding iniquity in your heart. So if I regard iniquity in my heart God will not hear my prayer also it went when so went out to, to say also in Proverbs 28 9 it says he that turneth away his ears from hearing the law even his prayer shall be an abomination to the Lord Wow Imagine that you, you, we all who are being, um, believe that we are, we are believers and we're doing our best and we're praying to God and we're wondering why aren't things happening in our lives? 
we cannot regard iniquity in our hearts and we cannot um, ignore the laws, the instructions, the protocols that God gave us to live by and expect him to hear our prayer. Because it says right here that he says in Proverbs 28, 9, not Sherilyn, it says, even our prayers will be an abomination. Mm -hmm. And it says, if we regard iniquity in our heart, that even God will not hear us. Now, iniquity looks like this. Now, if you're a part of a party, a, a political party, and I'm going to go there. I'm not a political person, but some of us, we, we, we stop talking to our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we get into all these these pish posh on social media and all these places and we arguing back and forth over things that we have no control over and then and all of a sudden when tragedy like this happens now we're fearful we realize how human we are these are things we regard iniquities in our heart we need to forgive we need to let those stuff go because those politicians once they get into place no matter which side they are they're going to do whatever they want and you're going to still be un un unhappy because they cannot serve everything. Again, unforgiveness. And if you're jealous of someone on your workplace, or you're jealous of someone on social media and that type of thing, if you regard an iniquity in your heart, guess what? Nobody don't have to see it, but the Lord that God sees it. So when you go to pray to him, you cannot expect him to obey and, and answer your prayer if you regard iniquity. Because he says it right here. If you regard iniquity in your heart, he himself will not answer it. Absolutely. Now, if you're out there cheating on your on your spouse uh, and flirting with everyone if you're uh, if you're being disrespectful and dishonor disrespecting your spouse and you expect God to hear your prayer you know um if you're not taking care of your responsibility as a parent and if you're a child that you're rebellious against your, your parents guess what all these things, different, they hinder, negative, they hinder your prayer, they mm -hmm. hinder your progress. So we want to encourage you guys. God is not is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, so shall he reap. You know, we cannot want to go do uh, all kinds of different things, evil stuff, and then say, okay, our evil is not as bad as the other person. Sin is sin. We all fall short. Mm -hmm. All of us. We we no one is is um is is what's that word? We're not it's exempt from exempt it. Exempt from and, it. And so that's but why it's how, it's how we live our life. And yeah. one of the things we want to do is ask for forgiveness. We want to cleanse our, our, our heart from all unrighteousness. We want to do these things so that when we pray, God will hear our prayer. And I hope you guys are hearing this part because this is, this is really mm -hmm. important for a lot of believers as well. Absolutely. That's why we, we give you the analogy up front that walking uprightly with God is difficult because sin is like gravity. So walking righteously with God is like walking a tightrope. Of course, sin is like gravity and it gives way to us possibly falling short, which we always will. Every one of us falls short of the glory of God. But the grace of God is like the net under the tightrope that catches us and we're able to get back up and go again. And so when God tells us to meditate on his word day and night so that we'll be able to do all that is written in it and make our way prosperous. We're in a process. God already knows that if I am growing myself today, tomorrow I'm going to be better, but I'm probably going to fall short. So his grace is there for the process of us growing, right. giving us a chance to get it right. I remember so, we said in the beginning there that each and every one of you guys are have influence. All of your leaders at, at, in some capacity somewhere. And um, basically, this is how we, we lead ourselves first. Because how well we lead ourselves is how we're going to be able to, that same way we lead ourselves is going to trans, um, the, you know, become effectuous around those around us. Absolutely. I wanted to go back to fear because I believe that fear, um, the, for us to sponge upon fear because it's coming to me this way for God has not given us a spirit of fear says uh, 2 Timothy 1 7 but of power and of love and of sound mind a lot of us don't feel that in this in these seasons that we have power you know but you, but this is what God is saying through these challenges and trials and tribulations mm -hmm. and things like this you have power we have power and authority that's why we told you guys whatever you say you have power over Thanks, your actions Dwayne. blessings to you you, bro. you know you have power of what it, over what you say you have power of what put you put inside of you when you turn the television on what you say with your, your child when someone says that negative thing that touched the wrong button you have power over what you will say and what you would do 
but you know when when fear and things happen is and it's in your life you don't feel like you're power you have power a lot of people are feel crippled crippled by the fact that they can't really go out and do the things that they've done before but God is telling you here no you have power so fear, uh, fear wants to make you feel that you're powerless mm -hmm. but no being prudent is not powerless being careful is not being powerless and knowing that you're powerless. Um, different change in your community is not you being powerless. You still have power and control over the things that you do you're and what goes on. You are in charge. You still have authority and the power. The other thing is of love. God gives us a spirit of love, not, not of fear. And here it says, you know, Joel was saying again, we're leaders in our community. And God, um, they asked Jesus, you know, the Sadducees and the Pharisees asked Jesus, okay, my my thing's not opening. Uh, uh, Messiah, uh, teacher, not Messiah. They call him teacher, rabbi. Um, what is what is what do you say is the best? They were trying to test him and said to say, what do you say, teacher, is the greatest command in the law? This is in Matthew twenty two thirty four and thirty five thirty six. Mm -hmm, so thirty four to thirty nine. It says, teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? And Jesus replied. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And 38 says, this is the first and greatest command. And it says, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now they ask for the greatest command. One greatest command. Because they're trying to get Jesus. They're trying to trip him up. You know, because there's so many commands. If you guys know mm -hmm. about um, the, the the ways of the Jews and Israel, is the Israelites, there were so many commandments. But this this is what Jesus is saying is the greatest commandment Why is that? to love the love the Lord the God with all your heart and all your soul and love your neighbor as yourself and, and love your neighbor as yourself. Why God saying that? Because when you love. When, when you love the Lord like the God, you will always go to God first, one. Mm -hmm. And when you go to God, God said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And then you will be so susceptible as children of the Lord to always go to his instructions to know what to do, how to treat others, how to behave, and follow the protocols. And now also you love your neighbors as yourself. Now when you are growing, when you're 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 reaching up to God. You're always healing. You're always getting better. You're you're you. There's peace. There's humility, and you're knowing that you're not in control, but you do have the power and authority that God told you that you have, and you you you're more confident in the things that you do. But you don't do things to harm other people. You demonstrate love to others because you know that you're valuable, and then you start to treat others as you treat and see yourself, and who you see yourself as is who. God yeah. has shown to you let with your relationship you, with him who you are let me so give then you the opposite. love others let, let me break that down for you because when you love yourself you love others yeah you can't love others if you don't love yourself first and 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 I'll give you a good example and this is this is very important for this time mm. that we're in and mm. that we're not operating reckless out mm. there Suicide bombers. Those are a prime example of people that don't love mm. themselves. Mm. Suicide bombers are the most dangerous terrorists and criminals for any government to contain. And the reason why governments say that they're the most dangerous is because they don't care about their own life. Mm. And a person that don't care about their own life will always compromise the lives of others. Mm. Right? And so loving God and then loving others as you love yourself, God's wisdom was in that because he knows that once you care for yourself, mm -hmm. you automatically will make sure you don't compromise wow. others because you That's believe good. that you are more valuable than that. Mm -hmm. But a suicide bomber that don't care about his own life is the most dangerous person to, the, to, to human society. And so it's important for us to understand that. So tonight, tonight we're really talking to you about leading your family and those that you have influence over well during a time of crisis because once you are uh, uh, alive you have influence and, the, and and the definition of leadership is influence mm -hmm. and once you have influence especially in a time of crisis you got to be careful to comport yourself in a way that when you speak you're bringing hope when you speak you're adding value and you're adding hope to those around you and that takes away from the negative that's happening out there right now that takes away from the fear 
and the chaos that the news and, 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 and society wants to bring into your community, into your homes. It brings peace to your own home. If you got children um, and a spouse, when you come home, you should sound different. Mm -hmm. Leaders sound different from the crowd. Mm -hmm. So when you come home, your children should be hearing a voice of reason. They should be hearing a voice of hope. And of course, um, you know, crisis should always present to you an opportunity to be a blessing to others um, and to bring peace and to bring hope wherever you go. So we're and talking I, I tonight. Just, this just got to me. As parents, sometimes we want to be able to create the safe, safety mm -hmm. and security for our children as much as possible. And it's okay that we do not know or have all the answers. Absolutely. And we want to communicate that to our children as well. But we say, you know, we do not have all the answers. But what we do know is that God is with us and for us. And there here is a great opportunity for us to even share share a word or a scripture. Find a scripture in the word of God that will that covers things for you so that when, in case your children seem like they're unsure and, and any kind of um, um, uncertainty that's going on and you use that as a way of comforting yourself and also your children mm -hmm. and as you speak it into the atmosphere again God will send his archangels out to go about making that happen for you and um, those around you Absolutely. so and remember course, that you, you don't got... have to again you don't have to have all the answers Mm -hmm. And if you have children, you're, what you're doing according to scripture is you're training them up in the way they should go, which means that your behavior should be consistent with the things that you say out of the word of God. Yeah. As a matter of fact, your behavior is most important because your training is them watching a demonstration of you living out what you believe. Mm -hmm. So training them in the way they should go is all about action. So we talked about being prudent according to Matthew 4, 6, and 7. We talked about managing the spirit of fear or shutting it down mm -hmm. so that you're going to be able to function without compromising yourself by using negative and putting words out there that's going to that's gonna snare your life. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, praying and seeking God's face for guidance, comfort, peace, mm -hmm. and that type of stuff in difficult time. And lastly, I want to talk to you about walking or living uprightly with God all the time, not just in difficult times. It should be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I want to read to you Psalm 91 because Psalm 91 gives us a protocol mm -hmm. as to how we should live our lives and, and it talks about the divine protection mm -hmm. that comes with living your life uprightly. So here's what Psalm 91 says. I'm going to pause and stop just to break some stuff down as I go. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right there and then, we talk about being under the shadow of the Almighty means that there's a covering over mm -hmm. your life if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. The, secret, the secret place, place of God is a place that you find personal private time to meet with God. That's your prayer time. Mm -hmm. That is your prayer time, and that's the time that you spend time reading the Word of God because God doesn't always speak to you audibly, right? He doesn't, you know, shout out to you out of nowhere. He speaks to you through His Word. And so the more you read God's Word, the more you know His character, the more you know what He would do in certain situations, the more you know how to comport yourself, and the more you know Him as you read his word. So of course, being in a secret place with him, meaning that every day you have a habit of pulling aside from the noise and all of the responsibilities of life and spending some private time in prayer and reading the word of God. So it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So you got his covering. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and, and my, my fortress. fortress. Now doesn't that sound my God. That's that's protection. A refuge is a place that you can run and hide and a fortress Something is Something that a, cannot be penetrated. Is a place easy. that you can is a bunker that cannot a spiritual bunker that cannot be penetrated at all. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. A fowler is a hunter. A hunter that is not showing you who they really are, mm -hmm. but they are seeking to destroy you. Mm -hmm. now, now, this is not a person per se. This is a spiritual conversation that will use people mm -hmm. 
to, 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 to bring your demise or that may use a situation or this whole thing that's happening right now to bring your demise. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the, uh, and, and from the noisome pestilence. A pestilence is what we're dealing with right, right. now. Right? right? COVID-19. Pestilence. It's a pestilence. Pestilence he, also. Pestilence come upon the land when the people are disobedient and they're um, rebellious to God. You know, if you read the old, the old Testament over and over, it talks about the children of Israel being disobedient, not following the commandments of God. And then after every pest, every every um, rebellion and anything that uh, people are behaving unrighteously, too many in the land, a pestilence will always follow. Again, not my word, but that's it's in the Bible. Okay, he shall cover thee with the feather with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and thy buckler. This is awesome because God said he'll be your shield and Beautiful. your buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. And so once you are dwelling in the secret place of God and you are hiding under his, his shadow or his protection... He provides a fortress. He provi provides mm -hmm. a place of a refuge. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that you don't have to worry about the terrors that come to you by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Now, here's the deal. There's thousands and thousands and millions of people in the world that are being affected by all these different things that come regularly to harm us. Right now, we're dealing with COVID-19. But God is saying that if you dwell in his secret place, if you abide under his shadow, he provides a place called a fortress. He provides uh, protection from a fowler or someone that would hunt down your life. And he said that you don't have to be afraid of what comes by night or the arrows that fly by day because you're doing those things that he talked about up front mm -hmm. no, all right he says nor by the nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for destruction that wasted mm -hmm. at noonday here's what god says when you dwell in his secret pla place what happens a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near thy dwelling or near thee mm -hmm. right so all of this, these are all benefits yes. of a Promises person. To us. Yes. In Psalm 91, God is promising you that if you dwell in his secret place and if you walk with him and if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, these are all benefits of walking uprightly with God. And so we're talking to you, yeah, be prudent. Yeah, manage the spirit of fear. Yeah, do what the government's saying to do. Wash your hands, buy the, the Lysol, do all that stuff. Stay away from dangerous situations. Be prudent, right? Pray and seek God. But God has given us in Psalm 91 a package that comes loaded with benefits, right? He says, only with thine eyes. So God is saying, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. So God is saying those that are refusing to live the way I'm saying to live here in Psalm 91, only with your eyes you're going to see their demise, but it won't come near you. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. So he's saying, because you've made God your refuge and your place where you hide and live, because you're living with God, this is the benefit. There shall, um, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Right. So God is saying that his angels now are being dispatched in the spiritual realms to keep you in all your ways. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt tread upon the lion mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. cobra, the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the, shall be trampled under thy feet. Because, he's telling you again, because he had set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. So God is saying that because you, because you honored him, he'll deliver you. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Mm -hmm. 
with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation and so if you don't um, understand the the divine protection that comes with walking with God and living uprightly and doing it God way I would say tonight don't take my word for it crack open your Bible to Psalm 91 and see the benefit that comes with walking with God and what that does for you it puts you in a place of peace it puts you in a place of common leadership because like I mentioned earlier in my conversation with you that leadership is influence and you cannot give what you do not have you can't give to your family and your children if you're a man you can't give to your wife what you don't already have and I choose to spend my time with the one that created the heaven and earth the one that put the manual out the one that forecasted thousands and thousands of years ago that what we're dealing with would have happened and here's how you handle yourself when it's happening because I need to have in me already you see when when opportunities mm -hmm. come to lead mm -hmm. you can't prepare when it comes you got to mm -hmm. prepare mm -hmm. before it comes mm -hmm. so that you already have what it takes Amen. to operate in peace and to operate with great leadership mm -hmm. and so tonight we just wanted to jump on here and we wanted to talk to you about the fact that you know leadership is influence and we all have a sphere of influence whether it be just your family in your household or maybe your family and those in your neighborhood or your community if you're very involved in community you've got a sphere of people that look to you for peace look to you as a sounding board they look to you to see how you operate and comport yourself in difficult times and so if you are tripping and breaking down and you sound just like the media you are not giving them hope you are not leading to the best of your ability but to lead to the best of our ability we got to go and spend some time with the one yeah. that created this all and already knew the beginning from the end or the end from the beginning so to speak so that we're going to be able to walk it out with those that need us well right? I, didn't, I wasn't planning on saying this but this came to my mind i remember that um there's, there's a story in the bible in the new testament where uh the, the disciples were trying to cast a demon out of a person and um they were doing all their their their, their thing they were they were they were yelling they mm -hmm. were carrying on and they could not carry take this demon all of them were working simultaneously but they couldn't cast the demon out of the person yeah. And then Jesus came on the scene and mm -hmm. Jesus just commanded the, the spirit out of the person and right away went. Now, Jesus, Jesus walked the earth as a man. Yes, he was um, in a God, per, a God in God in the man in the person of a man, but he also gave them the, a part, the the authority to cast the demons out. Now, one of the things that I recognize that the uh, disciples did is that they recognized that you know Jesus was doing something that they weren't doing. Mm -hmm. That why he was getting this results, and that what they noticed is that Jesus, and how I know that they noticed this is because they they instead of saying Jesus, how did you do that? They asked him. Teach us how to pray. Um, yeah, they said, um, Rabbi, Rabbi and I, sh sh teach, teach us, us how, how to pray. pray. Because they knew that mm -hmm. Jesus was away and Jesus spent most of his time praying and then he comes upon the scene and he did le less in less time he was effective effective around the masses he spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with, before his father praying and doing whatever he did but then when it came to time to deal with people to communicate and to teach he didn't spend that as much time and he was very effective in the time that he did that spend he with out, the yeah. people and this is a reminder I think a reminder of a lesson that you know as leaders as, as influence um, influence. the influencers that we have in our, our community whether it's our children looking up to us or or parents and so on and so forth you know what we do in our in our quiet time in our closet you know in a alone time how we, what we put in ourselves when we go out in the world, it automatically comes out. We don't have to pretend and we don't have to intentionally try to work hard to do it. It just comes out. So we want to encourage you to continue, as the Bible says in in um in Chronicles, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. You know, if my people who are called my name would humble themselves. So humbling ourselves is really finding time for ourselves, always quieting the noise around us and intentionally seeking to humble ourselves before God, to say, God, I need 
I need you. I'm calling out to you because everything around me is so overwhelming. And the next point that I, that is very near and dear to me that I found is so effective is um is repenting of of sins, asking him to search my heart. God said he desired a, a contrite and a broken heart, a heart that is repentant and right before him. And so when whenever I'm praying, I want to make sure that I am also cleansing myself by by repenting. God says if you repent, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and all unrighteousness you know we're asking him to forgive us our sins but he's also adding something else onto it he's forgiven us of all unrighteousness so it's a place to go before our father and humble ourselves because we're not perfect we can't we don't have control you know um, my husband is always he was, we were we were in um, Walmart yesterday and a young lady um, that we didn't see in a while, we were talking about um, to her, and she was so grateful to see us, and we were so happy to see her. And um, you know, she started to tell us some things, and he said, you know, that God is um, no, no. What was I going to say? <laughs> you were telling her about. We said a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, anyway, but um, just wanted to 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 impart upon you that when you ask God to forgive you of all your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you. Oh, we were not meant to carry a lot of anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. God didn't create us to carry. He said to cast His care, your our care upon Him, and that you know, and um, and be, you know, He will take care of us once mm -hmm. we cast our care upon Him. He constantly tells us to cast our care upon Him, and so I want to encourage you guys. We were not meant to carry stress and anxiety anxiety and worry now things come upon us that's new to us and how we did deal with it you know we might be like you know sidetracked because we're not expecting it it's not a part of our expectation so for a moment we have to comport ourselves humble ourselves it may take a little bit of time um, we might think about all the, the uh, options and different things that we have to do but make sure mm -hmm. that you go and you cast your cares upon the Lord and don't carry up because when we do what happens is that when we start to worry, it turns into stress, it turns into anxiety, and then depression. Our body was not meant to carry worry. God, that's why God said, cast it upon me, and you take care, of, and he'll take care of everything else. And then we could focus on enthusiastically serving and loving our family and our neighbors as ourselves, and um, going about washing our hands and, you know, um, sanitizing and cleaning. I'm, I'm, not, I'm like, you know what, you see the children come in and say, you know, I love to tell them I always have sanitizers and stuff like that, um, even prior to this. So I'm like, I'm loving the fact that it's encouraging our children to be more uh, sanitary. <laughs> You mean to do what we've yeah, been telling them to, to do, do for years. all these years, yeah. So, um, yes, guys. So we just wanted to jump on here tonight and talk to you about the importance and the responsibility that we all have um, as leaders, because we have a sphere of uh, uh, influence as as individuals, which means that we are all leaders, and um, especially um, couples. You know, you're you you have a family that you're responsible for leading, and so the most responsible and prudent thing to be is to make sure you guard your heart because mm -hmm. out of your heart flows the issues of life. You want to make sure that you sound different than the media and the masses um, because it means that you are gaining your mm -hmm. insight and understanding from the Lord mm -hmm. and not from the world. And to know that um, you have uh, the ability to be uh, in, uh, in charge um, while letting God be in control. And the right. best way to let God be in control is to know His Word and to do His Word. Mm -hmm. And once you know His Word and you're doing His Word, He is in control and you're in charge. Right. Makes sense? And you can walk with peace and not worry about what tomorrow holds because you know what? God's in control. Amen? Yeah, so tonight we you thank guys. you, Father, for this opportunity to come before your people and to bring this message. Father, we pray that you would bring your peace to them that surpasses all understanding. We pray, Father, that those that are listening to this message now and those that are going to hear it are going to pursue you, Lord God, and abide in you as your word continues to abide in them. And your promise, if they do that, is that you would draw near to them yeah. and you would give them a peace that surpasses all natural understanding. Right. 
Father. And anything that they ask, Lord God, according to your word, your answer to them, Father, is that you will do it. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, today we pray a hedge of protection over each and every family that's uh, under the sound of our voice and each and every person that uh, that is in this world, Lord God. We pray on the full armor of God upon their lives so that they can stand against the wiles of the enemy in these evil days. Right. Father, we right. thank you right now that the blood of Jesus was shed Father, for these very moments, Lord God, to cover and protect them from all harm and all diseases, that, that, that by the stripe of Jesus, Lord God, that they're healed and protected. We just thank you now, Father, for all that you're doing and all that you continue to do in their lives and even through them, Father, as they pick up the mantle of leadership and they take on the responsibility to represent you in their sphere of influence and in their community and on their jobs. We thank you, Father, that you would strengthen each and every one of us and give us your insight, that we would have your perspective on our lives, our, your perspective on this situation that we face, that we would walk, Lord God, closely with you so that we can always gain your insight and that we would seek your understanding first. We just thank you, Father, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you guys, you guys for tuning have in. Have a great week. We Stay love you. safe. Love you guys. We'll and, see you next, uh, see you next week. week.